and today in church as the church to unite together. And I continue to hear that voice even today, the word that came to us even a couple weeks ago as I begin to pray for this year, for my family, and even as I always do, what does it look like going into the new year? I was reminded last year that God spoke to us before, and the message going into last year was that we're that it would be our mindset that makes the difference. <laughs> And the proclamation that it's the mindset of Christ. And wasn't that the truth about this last year? That our mindset about who we are and who he is in our life, no matter the contrary circumstances, makes the difference to what's going on in our life. It's like us proclaiming each day, as far as me and my house, <laughs> we will believe. As far as me and my house, we are healed. As far as me and my house, God is our provider. As far as me and my house, we will assemble as the church, no matter what it looks like. And that's that fire, that edge, that faith, that tenacity that I still feel in my heart. And I'm so thankful. I'm so thankful. I want to give a big shout out to all of you that have stayed uh, together, that have done whatever it took to be united, to assemble. Those of you that have really stuck in there throughout the year, um, didn't matter what it looked like, you did your best to be a part of what God was doing because really what it was is we were being, we were adapting. Uh, we were adapting. We were maintaining faith while adapting to the changes and the challenges that were around us. And I just give a big shout out. I thank God. We praise God, me and Pastor Trichelle and Philip as a family. We're so thankful for all of us as a family to be a part of a church that is not just receiving grace for themselves, but also making a determination and a commitment that we're going to give grace and we're going to be grace in our church, and in the community that surrounds us. Taking recognition to the call of God on our personal lives, whatever God has gifted us to do, we're going to unite that gift. We're going to unite our family <laughs> as a church and as families. And we're not going to be those that drift away. We're not going to be those that are discouraged away. But we are those that are, that are committed to the mission of reconciliation to the world, to be a voice of praise, a proclamation of the good news of Jesus Christ. Amen. And uh, that's what we're thankful for. And, and I want you to know, Jesse Worship Center, this would not be possible without you, but it would not be possible also with all the faithful leaders of all the ministries those that have really stayed true to the mission. Um, and I want to say thank you, team leaders, all of you that have really united together with us as pastors and said, yes, we're going to, we're going to do this and always being flexible and always being there, being present, being those that are reaching out to other people. When it was tough, you were still giving. You were still being generous. You're still reaching out to those around you. And so, Dusty Worship Center, we need to applaud those leaders that are in this church that have made a commitment to the mission of Jesus Christ of reconciliation. And they've stayed true throughout this whole year. And so I can't go into a new year without thanking God for every single one of you that have made this possible. That's why we're here. Um, our broadcasting team, thank you for making a dedication and commitment to get the message, the worship, the life of Christ out to the world. And uh, so today I want to applaud you as pastor as well. And thank you and thank God for you today. And I bless you in the name of Jesus for your work, the work of the gospel. That is never dimmed. And sometimes we have been challenging 
questions come, but there's always that quick to rise up to say, I'm up for the game. I'm up for the challenge. I believe in the mission of Jesus Christ. So praise the Lord for that. And I keep hearing this message, unite with God. And that's our vision for this year. And this, even like last year, I see that God was faithful, that I'm saying it again. And this may seem simple. And this is where we cannot mistake the word. Let's not grow weary of the value of God's word spoken. Understand that when God speaks, he speaks through people. And if we can hear his voice, we'll be more than prepared to live every day forward, to live in the word of the Lord. There's grace when we hear the word for ourselves and take it. And this is what's been coming to us at Desi Worship Center. And maybe it's your first time here today. And I believe this, that as long as we unite with God in faith, listen, in a world surrounded with bad news, we will see the good news and have great joy <laughs> because that's our portion. As we unite by faith with God personally, as we unite with God by faith together, we assemble and we don't withdraw whatever church we are called to, that we are out of tension. We're rallying our family. We're rallying to the schedule. We're rallying to the purpose of God. Every day when we wake, we say, God, I thank you that I give myself to your purpose today. And we unite ourselves personally as individuals. And then we unite our families together by faith. And as families, we unite as the church. There is nothing more powerful then someone that is united with God and then united with God with his family and church, being the church in this day. And so I, want, I wanted to remind us, looking back throughout this year, let this year be a reminder and a lesson that we are more than enough. Amen. With God, we are more than enough. That who we are is greater than what we face. Let this year be a reminder <laughs> that we should hold tightly and firmly the values of Christ, which are what? Family, faith, love, generosity. That all the things that are going on in the world that we still hold firmly to the values of Christ. Let this year be a reminder right? That we should never allow the world around us to change our hearts. That we should never allow the world around us to change our mission of Christ. It should never cause us to shift inside to who we are on the outside. And again, instead of being overtaken and pushed away, <laughs> that we can be those that rise up, take action, and be the change in the world. And I couldn't be more proud of so many of you and, and us as a church that we were those that rose up to the challenge. We are united together, united with God to rise up, to take action, not just sit back and look at it, not just listen to the news, right? Not just up, uh, allow the world to tell us how it's going to be, but we are listening to what God is saying. And we rise up, take action, and actually be a reason why change happens. And we have done what God has purposed us to do. And so going into this year, I want you to get ready because we are going to see in the face of bad news, and you're always going to have that, there will be challenges in the world. Jesus reminded his disciples, he reminded us that there will always be suffering in the world. There'll be challenges that come up. As long as we're on this side of heaven, right, we will be challenged. But listen, when we understand who we are united with God, it doesn't change us inside. It won't change who we are. 
but we are able to rise up and be the difference. And I can't help but continue to hear the proclamation of God. I keep hearing it and declaring it all week long. I've been declaring it over us, speaking it over you, going into the new year. And so I'm going to read this again. And this is the same scripture we read last week. And the same perspective of what we've heard the last two weeks about this year. That we're going to unite with God by faith together, individually and together. And as we do, here's the message. We can expect good news and great joy because that's our portion in this world. Our portion as a believer of God is that we can expect good news in the face of bad. We can expect great joy even when we've been challenged. Amen. Oh, that's our portion. And let's hear the proclamation and think about it for a moment. This was one of the first proclamations as Jesus, our Savior, our Redeemer, was born to all men. And this was the proclamation of what came to us. And let's read it here. Luke chapter 2, verse 8 says, And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. Can you imagine that? I mean, it's quiet, and, and man, the light show of heaven comes. A big light show of heaven just shows up, and listen to the proclamation. Verse 10, here it is. But the angel said to them, do not be afraid. I bring you good news that will cause great joy for all people. I bring you good news that will cause great joy. Notice he said to all people. He is not a perspective of people. He is not prejudiced. He doesn't favor one or the other over the other. When Christ came, he Christ came for the whole world to unite the world unto God as children of God. In verse 11, he says, Today in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. And see, right here he's saying Jesus is that good news. Jesus and what he's done for us since this, since this scripture, what he has done for us and where he has placed us with him at his right hand. Jesus is the good news that brings great joy. That means every day, every year, Every season of our life, our portion is good news and great joy. When bad news comes, wait for it, wait for it, wait for it. Good news and great joy will come out of it. Hallelujah. You're catching me. When challenge arise, wait, wait, wait for it, wait for it. Don't settle for that. Wait for it. Good news and great joy will come forth, will prevail, will triumph when disappointment, when hurt, when suffering. Jesus talks about suffering coming. Things come against us. Wait for it. Wait for it. Don't let that sway you. Don't let it change your heart. Come on now. Yes, yes. Good news and great joy will triumph over that situation if you can believe when we unite with God. And we believe the proclamation. Are you believing the proclamation that I'm sharing with you today? Are we believing the word that came to us about the Savior that we serve? About the Jesus that we live in? Are we believing that to prevail in this generation of people? I'm believing that. I believe you are too. And I just kept hearing that. Listen, our portion is good news and great joy going into 2021. That doesn't mean we won't hear bad news. That doesn't mean we won't face the challenges. That doesn't mean we won't face persecution. That doesn't mean that we won't at times have situations rise that could create frustration and disappointment. What it means is that we choose not to settle for the bad news and we choose to believe in the proclamation of good news and great joy through Jesus Christ. That's the message of this year, that we unite with God by faith individually and together, no matter what that looks like, 
And as we unite with God, get ready because you will see good news and great joy in that area of your life that you've not seen it. In that area of your life where the bad news has come. That's where God wants to flood his light in the midst of that darkness. That's where good news can come right there in that bad news. Good news and great joy. I want you to begin to proclaim it today. Say it with me. Say, good news news. and great joy joy. in every area of my life. life. Say, in that area. area. And I want you to say it to that area. Let's say it. Say, good news, news. great joy joy. in that area. area. In that area that that has been a challenge. Good news and great joy. Amen. Thank you, Father. We thank you for that right now. Good news and great joy in the name of Jesus. What's the good news? We heard it. I want to proclaim it to you today. In Scripture, the Bible says that our sins have been forgiven. Get rid of that guilt. Give it to Jesus. Your sins have been forgiven. We are accepted by grace. We're accepted not by our perfection, but by the grace of God. We are reconciled to God. That means he settled every account when it came to us. And he has reconciled us to himself. That means that we are joined in an unbreakable relationship with God. Today, you have an unbreakable relationship with God the Father through what Jesus Christ has accomplished, my God. We are justified by faith. That's good news. We are justified by faith in the work of Jesus, not by our righteous works, but because of his righteous works. Amen. We have the promise of peace that passes all understanding, hope that is not disappointed, the Bible says. (laughs) Hallelujah. We are blessed because of Jesus. What Jesus has done, we are blessed coming in. We're blessed going out. How about this? No matter what disease is in town, guess what? We are healed by the stripes of Jesus. We've been made healed through the blood of Christ. When he was up on that cross, he crucified coronavirus. He crucified every sickness and disease. It doesn't matter who's in town, uh, what sickness is in town. Jesus is living on the inside of us. That's the good news. These are good news. We have the power to overcome, the Bible says. Because of God's love demonstrated through Jesus Christ. I'm telling you right now that our portion is we unite with God together, individually and together. Good news and great joy is our portion. With all the stuff surrounding the world, that doesn't change who we are to God. It doesn't change who God is to us. It doesn't change the capacity that we've been hearing hearing about coming into this year. That's not an accident. That our capacity, who we are in Christ, is greater than what we face. And we have found that out when we begin to trust God. We found that out this year. It was put to test. And guess what? Guess what came out of that tea bag when you put it in hot water? Jesus came out. Many of you have seen the testimony of who Jesus really is in our life. I know that we have. We have seen God move and work in in, in, in many ways. He has made a way, and we've seen him through your life. And so I want to begin to close, and I just wanted to share this strong in my heart, the proclamation of God. People of God, I hear the call to unite. Unite with God as an individual. Unite with God as families. Unite with God and assemble with the church God has purposed you to be a part of. Don't do it half-heartedly. Don't do it when you just feel like it. Do it by faith and not by feeling. Do it by faith and not by sight. Uniting with God is something we do by faith, not by what we feel like. Not because of what somebody else is doing. 
but because we believe in Jesus. We believe in the proclamation yes. of good news and great joy. We believe that God loves us and he proved it through Jesus. Unite with him more than ever. That's what I hear. And so what's our takeaway today? First of all, as, as, as we do this, number one, our takeaway is this for this year. Number one, unite with God personally by faith. What does that mean? That means every day wake up and declare. Have relationship. Access and enjoy the relationship that you have with God. And we've been feeling this more than ever. Is that we need to begin to engage with God in a relationship of prayer again. I was reminded of a quote I thought was so good. And, the, and it's a question. This is a quote, a question. And it says, is your prayer life a steering wheel or a spare tire? Woo! That's a good question. In other words, do we have an ongoing relationship? Is what we do with God based out of just pure faith and love? Or do we go to God when we just need him? Do we pray when we're under anxious circumstances? Do we just seek him when we need something badly, when we don't have what we want to have? Or are we living with him every day that no matter what, it's our relationship? And don't get me wrong. Listen, Jesus, God is a deliverer. He would never want you not to come to him. But the question bids a challenge to us as believers that we have such an amazing relationship with God through Jesus. What generosity that God has given us, what love he has showed towards us, that he desires to have relationship with us, that if we ask anything in, him, in his name, it shall be done. That he is with us. If we ask for wisdom, we receive it. And so my encouragement, unite with God by faith in prayer this year. Unite by faith in relationship this year. More than ever, a day-to-day -day relationship. Number two, unite with God together. And we heard this this last week that we would do whatever it takes to assemble in faith and in love. Amen that we're not just strong individuals or listen to this, strong families in and of ourselves, but we unite with God and his church. We begin to empower the corporate church. We lend our resources. We lend our strength. We lend our grace that God has given us as individuals and as families. We lend it to the purpose of the church, which is to reach beyond ourselves and into the world. There's no greater purpose than that. I mean, we don't start living until we live to be generous beyond ourselves. When we start to give uh, to others, we start to share with others, we start to tell others about this good news generously. We don't really start living until we live beyond ourselves to somebody else. Amen. And so, number two, unite with God together, assemble, uh, no matter what that looks like, whatever church you're a part of, whatever pastor is your pastor, listen to the voice that is being spoken, get involved with what's going on, do it the way God is doing it. Hallelujah. And then thirdly, Unite with God by trusting him. Listen, by trusting him in the face of challenging times, in the face of the bad news, in the face of disappointment, in the face where you could be offended, put that aside and begin to look to God and trust God and listen, believe and receive the good news and great joy that is your portion. And I speak it right now, that as we unite individually with God, as we unite together as a church, as we trust God, that good news and great joy shall be our portion this year and in the years to come. Yeah. 
We're not waiting for some move of God because we know that God already moved in Jesus Christ. He already did a reviving, and now we just have to begin to come alive. Any revival that happens now is just to wake us up to what's already happened. And let me tell you, there has been an awakening for many of us that I pray that this year, we would see the good news and the great joy more than we ever have. Individually as families, and I believe it for a church to spread it to the world around us in Jesus' name. And so let's come in agreement today. Let's pray. I want to pray for you. I want to pray for all of us as we go the last Sunday today. And we're going to have, remember, 10 p.m., uh, for New Year's Eve, but we want you to hear this. This is what God is speaking. Unite with him individually, together, and trusting him for the good news and the great joy that belongs to us. So, Father, right now, I just thank you. We thank you together. We give you praise. We give you honor. And in Jesus' name, Lord, I believe for each and every person, each and every family that is listening to this word, I pray even for those that have found themselves drifting, those that have found themselves fractured in purpose. God, we pray, draw them back to a place of trust. Draw them even as you do. You're so good at drawing us, Holy Spirit. You're so good with reviving us. And I pray a stirring and a reviving in our hearts that we would be awake to your presence, that we would be awake to your love that we would be awake to your word, alive to what you are doing in our life now. We don't fear what's before us because we know who is for us. Oh, praise you, Jesus, right now. I praise you. I want you to say this with, with me today. All of us together as a family, if you want to commit to this unity, unity with God, unity with with his purpose let's say this together today say father god thank you for sending jesus thank you for the good news that causes great joy i accept the good news i claim my great joy right now and into the new year say I declare good news great joy in me in my family and in my church Father God I unify my faith with you as a family use us in your church and use us to impact the world say I'm ready I lean on your grace I accept your love and I place faith in that I place faith in you in Jesus name Amen. Give him a great big shout of thank you right where you are, right there at your house. Come on, Father, we thank you. We give you praise. We give you thanks. We rejoice for the good news and the great joy that we're able to be united with you every day. Oh, thank you for your presence that never leaves us. You never forsake us. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, God bless you. Let's, uh, PT has something to share with you real quick before we go. So here's Pastor Trichelle. Let's welcome her. And then we're going we're gonna to give out, we're going to do our motto as we close. Thank you. Oh, what a great day today. Thanks to everybody for hopping in and hopping over. Sorry about that confusion with the uh, password, but glad that you are all on YouTube and worshiping with us today. Um, I, 
so thankful for God's provision and his grace upon us. You know, scripture tells us that the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. And I've been studying myself on stewardship this week, thinking about the gift that's been entrusted to each of us. We each have gifts. We each have blessings. The Bible tells us that God has given us the ability to obtain wealth, that he's given us great potential within us that we can work and we can grow and we can become all that's in our hearts to become. And as I was thinking about this today, I was thinking about our ministry. I was thinking about the church of, of the living God on earth and just how incredible it is when we come together as the people of God and we have a heart toward the kingdom to provide things like this right here that we can proclaim this good news. And as pastor and I reflected over this year, we, we, our hearts were so over just overjoyed with even though our venue has changed or the way we do church changed um, drastically in 2020, that our church was able to maintain um, the generosity. And it, it's not about giving to a building or giving to a man, but we thank God for those of us that understand that when we sow, that we are not just giving to God out of what we've received, but we, re we believe that God has given us all things and it's his ability within us to, to grow and to, to bless and to prosper and that we realize that it all belongs to him. And he's allowed us this gift to steward what we've accomplished in our lives. He's given us this ability to be good stewards of that. And as we've done that, we've continued to have a revelation of what it means to sow seed so that this gospel, so that this truth can continue to go forth so that you, that you can honor the gifts that God has given you and honor even our pastor. The Bible tells us that this church, Destiny Worship Center, is a gift, that our man of God is a gift, that men and women of God are a gift to us, not a curse to us, a gift to us. And so it's our privilege to be able to support the kingdom of God in the earth and make a way for this gospel to be heard. So as we were talking about that and reflecting on that, I just wanted to remind us that we are stewards with what God has given us. A lot of us think that we go out and we've made our own, you know, and even if you're, if you're very successful, it's God that gave us that ability to be successful and everything that we get and everything that we receive, even from what we think is the labor of our hands, it's God that gave us these hands to labor with. So we want to honor God with every single part of our success because we know it's not made by man. God has given us these gifts. And so uh, we we're just talking about that stewardship. I wanted to remind us that as you sow, you're not sowing into a man or into a thing on earth, but the Bible tells us that as you have received freely, you give. And as you do that it's so counterintuitive to the world. The world thinks that if you give it away, you're never going to get it back. But in the kingdom of God, when you give, the Bible tells us that more is given. It's so crazy, but it makes sense. If you think about planting a seed, if you plant one apple seed, you don't get one apple back. You get an apple tree and that tree is has thousands, the potential of thousands of seeds to come back. So as we give with supernatural faith, then we're like, Lord, you've blessed me with this. You've blessed me with this church. You've blessed me with this job. You've blessed me. All of this is because of you. So God, I'm going to honor you and I'm going to be a good steward of these things that you've given me because the Bible does tell us that if we will steward it, if we'll be faithful with those little things that we will grow into much. And I know all of us want to be able to bless and change the world through generosity and change the world through the love of God, change the world and meet needs through our ability, not just have enough for ourselves, but have enough to change the world. So I want to encourage you today that as you sow, so prepare your giving this morning, as you sow, give with that element of faith that a generous heart is the heart of God. For God so loved the world that he gave. And as we give today, we are literally becoming one and uniting with God as good stewards of the blessings that he's given us. I want our ability to give and bless to be so much greater than it is right now, that we can literally change the world with our own ability, the gift that God's given us and our generosity. I know that's your heart too. 
all of you are so generous and so faithful. So prepare your gift today. I wanted to share that because as we walk out of 2020 and as we go into 2021, we have such vision and such expectation that it is going to blow the minds of those around watching of what God is gonna do in our lives and in Destiny Worship Center and in us as a family. Greater things than we could ever expect ever, ever expect ever in our wildest dreams. He goes above and beyond those things. And he wants to give those things to us. And we're faithful in the little, we're faithful in the sowing, we're faithful in our seed and honoring God so that we can grow in that capacity so that we can continue to flourish and prosper like never, like we've never imagined. Amen. So be encouraged today with your seed, prepare your seed this morning. You all know how to give. And I ask you right now, not just to give out of a reflex, but to give with the intuitive, like understanding of God's direction for you today. Don't just give out of habit, but really let's ask the Lord for a moment. What would he have you? sow as you exit 2020 into 2021, let's think about it. Let's prepare. Let's allow God to speak a number, speak a seed, maybe someone in your heart that jumps in there that you want to sow into them. Someone you want to call today, someone you want to text today, someone you want to encourage, someone you haven't spoken to that you want to give a gift or you want to give um, a, a word of encouragement or love toward let's be generous and good stewards of this gospel of Jesus Christ. And as far as like sewing in to this ministry, you know how to do that. We're on Venmo. It's destiny worship dash center. You can text the amount to eight, four, three, two, one, super easy. Um, thank God for technology. You can also, um, give by check. If you are like old school and you want to do it that way, you mail it into PO box six, one, six, five, six, one, six, five, Lancaster, California, nine, three, five, three, nine. All of these ways you're able to give. Um, also, um, just ask the Lord for direction and know that there's nothing you cannot out give God. Whatever God speaks to your heart, don't be shy about it. Obey it and watch God turn that around. Bless you back more than you could ever ask or think. He's so generous, way, way, way more generous than we could ever think or imagine. So we receive that today. As you prepare your gift, let's pray for a moment so that you can receive all that God has for you today. Father, we thank you for this ability to sow this seed, to steward this money, this blessing, this gift that you've given us, to be a good steward of it and to sow into Destiny Worship Center and into our family, into our church, into the kingdom of God. Lord, we thank you that this is good ground. And Lord God, it will return a hundredfold, Lord, 30, 60, and even a hundredfold. Lord, we receive that supernatural return turn today. Lord, whether we're believing for healing, we're believing for um, loved ones, we're believing for change in our situations. Lord, whatever that is, we lift it before you today. Go ahead and name that thing that you need from the Lord today. Declare it as being done. Lord, I declare healing and I declare restoration. I declare wholeness. I declare deliverance and increase into our lives today. I declare peace. I declare love. I declare passion. I declare a renewed vision, clarity of mind. Lord, I declare that today, no confusion, no depression, no sickness, no disease will be able to abide within us, Lord. We'll be able to live in our homes and in our families, Lord, in our city and in our community. We speak peace and we declare the Lordship of Jesus Christ over our family. Come on, talk to your situation today. Speak faith to your situation this morning. Receive that word. God makes a way where there's no way. He is the answer to our prayers. He is the way maker. Lord, we thank you today for your amazing power. Nothing is impossible with our God. And Lord, we call forth, Lord, we don't just give and let it go, but we call forth the return of that blessing and that seed in Jesus name. And I speak to you today more abundant 
gifts than you could ever handle, where you are overwhelmed and overflowing with the blessing of God today in your work, in your relationships, in your finances, in all of your ambitions. Lord, we thank you for it today. We praise you for it right now in Jesus' name. Now go ahead and give wherever you are, sow that seed and receive the blessing. Count it as done because God is not a man that he would lie. He is faithful to his word. He watches over his word to perform it. We can rest at peace because of his faithfulness. It is very important that we give with intentionality and that we believe God for his blessing to manifest in the earth. God above, he desires above all things that we would prosper so that we can make a difference and change the world, not just look great and not just have everything we want. Although he does want you to look great and have everything you want, but he wants you to make a difference in the world and use this for his blessing to further the gospel so that all can hear about this amazing love of God. Oh, we're so thankful today. Thank you for your faithfulness. Thank you so much for always believing in us and always standing in faith. We are better together. 2021, y'all. We ain't even ready for this. It's going to be amazing. <laughs> All right. So we're going to say our motto together. I'm going to invite Pastor Breck back, jumping on with us, and I'm going to let him say it so I don't mess it up. And again, I want to remind you as we close that throughout this year, if anything arises, take the word of the Lord, and I felt this really strong, and speak. I declare. Say it to your mountain. Yeah, yeah. Say to your mountain. I declare good news and great joy in this situation speak yes. those things Amen. because it's yours it's the proclamation of god that we've heard so going in speak to it yes. and yes. say i declare good news and great joy will come out of this Amen. i speak good news and great joy to this situation with my family i speak good news yes. and great joy Amen. coming out of my bank account yeah. good news and great joy Amen coming out of my physical yes. the doctor's report yes. will turn around and it will bring good news and great joy in jesus name yes. that's going to be that's what we're going to do this yes. year all the way through yes. amen. amen and so let's say our motto because we believe it. it say it. Grace, grace happens here grace happens yes. in us amen. and through us we love you all. Thank you for joining in, and, and we'll see you on New Year's Eve night. Woo! 10 p.m. YouTube, DWCLA YouTube.